All right, it's 9.30. Let's get going. I'm sure that you have a very busy day ahead of you. So time is money and we don't want to take up any unnecessary time of yours. Okay, friends. So what I would like to start off is, is by saying that this is a pre-recorded session. I'm obviously coming to you live now, but uh, unfortunately, Tim and Karen couldn't do the recording this morning. So we pre-recorded it, but uh, taking nothing away from everything that they that they wanted to say or that we wanted to cover in the session. So if you have any questions uh, afterwards, you are very welcome to leave them with me and I can post them to Karen and, and Tim and we can always do a second a follow up session, you know, but uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that you're going to find great value in this morning's session. And as we know, there is so much that we can say about seller objections. There are so many objections that we that we have to face and that we have to address from our sellers there's no way that we can answer every single thing in 45 minutes so we just wanted to pick out two or three or four of the main objections that most of you face on a daily basis when you or as you engage with your sellers so again hopefully there's there's good value for you in the session and uh, and enjoy i'm going to take myself off the screen now and i'm going to start to play the recording Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's session on handling seller objections like a master. And we are joined by none other than Karen and Tim Upton from Team Upton, part of the Harcourt's Dunn team in the northern suburbs of Cape Town. They've been so kind to make themselves available to share their wonderful learnings of the past 21 years in real estate after they joined the real estate industry in 1999. And uh, they are always so willing to share to the or with the Harcourt's team the lessons that they've learned and always also great students of real estate, always keen and, and looking for new learning opportunities. So the idea, as you know, today with today's session is uh, to, to focus on addressing seller objections and how we can approach those objections that we get from the sellers. So as you know, Tim and Karen are Blue Circle agents they are top 10 agents for Harcourts in South Africa, consistently top performers. So we could not have asked for better colleagues to assist us today and to do a little bit of a role play uh, on these seller objections. So Tim and Karen, guys, thank you very, very much for joining us. Are you well? Excellent, yeah. thank you. Thanks, Kervis. Those words are so humbling and it's, yes, 21 years in the industry almost get a little tear. We're very passionate about what we do and we are in the right place with uh, Harcourt's done. Uh, been there six years now and um, you know, I just keep striving to do what we do, you know. So it's not all about the money. We just love the people dealing with architecture, houses, northern suburbs. It's got um, just a great place to live and it's quite easy for us to be passionate, you know. So you know, it's great to be here today and um, we're looking forward to this little session. And hopefully our 21 years can bring and add some value to everyone who's in the in the call today, you know? Yeah, brilliant, so, guys. Yeah. Brilliant. And thanks to everyone that's joined in. Hi, team. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. Well, you know, as, as you know, well, I can tell you that you are so loved and so highly appreciated and respected. Wonderful, wonderful members of the Harcourts team, always contributing so greatly wherever you go. And we, we have the greatest respect and appreciation for that. Um, what, what we wanted to start by sharing with you guys a short pre-list video that Karen and Tim have made recently that they send out to their sellers before they meet the sellers. And I'm going to ask Tim now to play us that little video. With the current market so active, accurate valuations are imperative to ensure that you sell your home for the best possible price in the shortest possible time. At Team Upton, we use these four key indicators. Number one, market assessment. We do an in-depth analysis of the current market conditions, recent sales and conversion times to accurately gauge the value of your home. Number two, 
CMA reports. CMA, also known as Comparative Market Analysis, is a service provider that uses mapping and data to provide insight into the market and the vicinity of your home. Number three, market understanding. As the leading estate agents in the northern suburbs and ranked sixth nationally for Harcourt, South Africa, we have an unparalleled knowledge of our market. Our ability to analyze the market and accurately assess your property is what makes us the best. And lastly, your input. We build relationships with our clients and listen to what you have to say. This is a step many agents overlook. But at Team Upton, we combine specialist services with remarkable customer service. At Team Upton, our valuations are so accurate. Recently, we sold 13 properties in 13 weeks in the northern suburbs. Don't delay, phone Team Upton today. Excellent, excellent, great. Thank you for sharing that with us, guys. And uh, as we've said, that is a little pre-list video that, that Tim and Karen sent out to their sellers just to give them a little taste of what Team Upton is about. So as we've said that the purpose of today's session is just to share some thoughts around those, those times when we meet with our homeowners, we meet with our sellers, and we talk about the marketing of their properties and we encounter various objections and yeah, challenges that our sellers pose to us and things that we that we might you know need to develop our skills on. And as we know, Tom Panel says says that you, you've got to be willing to sweat in practice so that you don't bleed in battle. And the importance the importance of practicing your scripts and practicing your dialogue and doing these role plays, guys, is very, very important. Uh, we always advise our agents to 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 practice your, to hone your skills, you know, with a colleague in the office, be it your, your sales manager or your principal or even an experienced colleague where you are the agent and they are, that, that, that colleague of yours is the seller or, or the buyer and you practice these objections. So we want to focus on a few seller objections today, as we've said. And on the screen, Tim has their marketing proposal open. So this will be part of our conversation today, but I would like to start by just setting the scenario. So I'm going to be the seller for today's purposes. And obviously, Karen and Tim are the agents that I've called in, but I don't know Karen and Tim. I've seen their boards in the area. I've seen them on social media. I've seen their billboards throughout the area where I live. And I have seen their activity with show houses. And I've heard of, of Karen and Tim Upton, but they have never sold a home, uh, a home of me. So this is the first time that I actually meet them and that they come to my property. I would also like just to mention to you that Tim and Karen, after 21 years in the business, their business mainly, or the, the, the new listings that come into their business are mainly from repeat and referral business. They have built up their business to a level where the bulk of their, of their new listings are repeat and referral um, clients. But I'm going to take in the position today, as I've explained to you, as a homeowner that does not have that relationship with them. I've never sold through them and uh, I've just seen their activity. So I'm going to try and make it a little bit tough on them. So let's see. Let's see how, how we go. Let's see how we go. I'm not going to make it unnecessarily tough, but we want to we want to try and enact it as best we can so that it's that it's realistic of what what actually happens out there in the marketplace. And I would like to start by, by jumping to a position where they've viewed my property and they're about to leave the front door and we're standing in the entrance hall. And after they viewed the property, I ask Karen and Tim, so guys, you've viewed the property now. What do you think? What do you think? Before you leave, just give me an idea of what you think I could sell for. What do you think I can get for the property? And what is your fee? How much do you charge? Okay, well, I'll start off by saying first thing first is um always arrive on time uh at least leave 15 minutes 
before the appointment, there's nothing worse than being late. I mean, that will straight away give a bad impression of you. Um, first impressions last, you've only got one chance, one chance at this. So make it a good one. And always go prepared, never go empty handed. Uh, we take along um, a pre listing box. Okay, and in that box, we have CMA reports or Lightstone reports, whatever you're comfortable to use. Um, be knowledgeable of the area, know your markets, what is sold over the last six months to a year. Make sure your presentation pack is professional, very informative, and, and give some value. So, um, you ask, what can I get for my property? What is your fee? Never discuss the price and the commission there and then. Um, ask the seller if you can go to, through some stats, obviously after you've viewed the property, you've looked at the aesthetics, etc. cetera. Um, and then you can sit with him, open the box, go through the stats, show him what is sold in the area over the last six months to 12 months. And he should be able to determine the true market value by showing him what is sold around his area. Um, that will show that your professionalism and, and your knowledge of the market. So, yeah, he, with looking at everything, he's probably thinking, oh, my home's worth about 2.5 million. But now from what you've shown me with all the stats, I'm kind of thinking, yeah, it's probably more sort of a 2.1. Um, so yeah, try and always let the seller um, sort of guide you with regards to what he should think his property should be priced at. That's where sort of we, we start. We never just give that's the property valuation and that this is the commission. Try and leave that to the end. You've got to build up some kind of rapport and some trust with that seller. And the way that you can do that is, is provide all the stats and your professionalism and, and your knowledge. Okay. Nice. All right. Okay, Karen, thank you very much for that. So, so what you're saying is that you really want to want to shy away from actually trying to answer that seller in the entrance hall to give them an idea of price and and commission. But what if you are in a position where you where you like where you know that this is now an opportunity where you really have to talk price and you have to talk commission. Um, and you don't, you might not have enough time really to sit down with the seller right there and then. They don't have time to have a, have a conversation with you. Do you then return the following day? Or Yeah, you can, um, obviously you'll, you'll pick up if he's pressed for time or, you know, he'll, he'll tell you, listen, I've, I've only got 20 minutes with you and really 20 minutes, do you think that's enough time? Yeah, I would rather not just come out with all of that, rather just say to me, you know, I can understand that you've, you pressed your time or whatever the case may be, or you have another appointment. So would it be possible to meet up with you perhaps tomorrow afternoon, whatever time is convenient so that we can actually sit down comfortably and give a proper markets presentation to you. So yeah, don't give it there and then, just try and get another appointment to, to sit with him. So everyone's comfortable, you can take the time to go through everything with him. That's, that's what we would do, try not to rush it. Okay, so but you say you go you go totally prepared with your comparative market analysis. You have in the information with you, um, so when you go to the property to to have that first viewing, you go as prepared as you possibly can with past sales and with what's currently on the market and all of those things. Okay, yeah. Thank you for that. So if I want to, if I can jump to to our to our to our then our discussion where I sit with you, I give you my time and we talk through your marketing proposal. And uh, we talk about price, you present to me your comparative market analysis, and um, you show me what has sold and you show me what's currently on the market. And and I say to you, so what do you think could, could I get for my property? What do you think my property can sell for? And you say to me, what would your what would your your answer be if I if I ask you there then in the proposal what do you think my property could sell for or what we should go to market for? Tim, just put put on your microphone, Tim. Yeah, 
So yeah, <laughs> I've got Karen echoing, so I just had to mute that. So like so you like said, Phyllis, um, I've come in, I've given, given we've given them uh, the, sort of the, the synopsis of the marketplace. Like Karen said, always go prepared, come with all the stats. We all know the buyers these days are so very clued up. They often arrive with more stats than we have in our box, you know? So we've got to show the seller also the fact that these buyers are paired. So yeah, we've got to do the whole synopsis with um, what's sold and what's currently on the market, what they're competing against. And at the end of the day, it's critical to get the pricing right. You know? So that's going to be one of the objections we'll talk about just now. Um, so, <laughs> okay, so so if 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 you ask if you guide me um, on if you show me the data the stats of what has what has mm. sold and what's currently on the market, and I don't want to necessarily volunteer a price. I, I say to you, I've called you guys in. I've I've already had um, agency A, sorry, agency B and agency C here that gave me a price indication. But I'm, I'm holding the cards close to my chest. I don't want to necessarily say what the other agents have said at this point. I first want to hear what you guys say before I say to you what the other agents have said. Um, and, I, and, I, and I push you to a point where you have to make a price, where you have to get, tell me what you think. How do you handle yeah. that? So 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 go on the lines of, you know, um, um, Mr. Lowe, Lowe, you know, it's, it's not exactly what you paid for this property five or ten years ago. It's not what you have put into the kitchen and you've renovated and you've built the swimming pool. Um, I know you've added a lot of value there and it's definitely um, given you value, your property value. So it's not what you need. It's not what you want. And at the end of the day, it's the market that's going to determine the, the sales price, you know. So we've shown you these stats. You can see the property across the road. It's also a four-bedroom. Um, they sold for four for three million rand, and it was spick and span. That guy spent about seven hundred thousand rand on his on his renovation, and yours is close to that. He's he's got a fourth bedroom, and I think um, you know to get to your realistic price. You know, to, then I'll talk to Karen a bit. We'll do a little bit of sign language about what sort of pricing we're going to do. And um, we came out and, and we said directly to the seller, hey, Mr. Lowe, we feel the property's worth between 2.7 and 2.75. We should put it on lean at about 2.795. It's a good asking price. It's close to the achievable price. The buyers are going to get the, the links from their public portals. And you're going to look like a shiny penny. The phone will start ringing on day one. These buyers will start arriving on day one. So we all know in the first two weeks is when the bulk of the buyers come out. Let's attract them from the beginning. Let's not miss that market, you know. So at the end of the day, we've, we've proven it. We've just come off 16 sales of 16 weeks and um, doing very well. The advice has been taken by the market. And we've been doing this for 21 years. And it's, it's all about the stats. It's all, all about the money. money. The numbers don't lie. <laughs> so that's kind of where we are. Um, we pass for the marketplace. Okay, Tim. So uh, thank you for your opinion on the 2.75. But, but guys, I, I had two other agencies in here, as I've mentioned. And the one agency valued the property around $3 million, And the other agency said that I could actually possibly looking, be looking at $3.2 million. So I'm... I'm quite surprised by, by your 2.75. Um, do you think that that's the best that we can do? Uh, I know what, you, what you've said about that other property that's across the road, but, um, but I was really hoping to get more for the property. You can. Um, okay, Corbis. Um, so the price is too low. Okay, we understand and appreciate that you were expecting more. Um, but the market will ultimately determine the value of the property. So you as a buyer, would you pay true market value for a home? Um, you certainly wouldn't overpay for a property knowing that it's overpriced. So neither will your buyers. Um, and ultimately, what is your reason for, for moving? What is your timeline? I mean, are you moving away, out of the country, up country? Do you have a timeline? Are you going in three months' time? So, 
I'm just saying if that's the kind of situation, then you need to be priced absolutely perfectly from the outset. If you, as, as I mentioned before, the market will come through in the first two weeks of your property being listed. Okay, so you don't want to be overpriced three or 400,000 Rand and you're going to sit and then we're going to have to start nudging prices and ultimately you're going to end up with less. And again, it's again about the motivation and, and the timeline for, for your move. Yeah, as, I, as I've mentioned to you, you know, I'm serious to sell. I, I need to move uh, because we're upscaling. We have our own property. So I definitely, I'm very keen to sell the property. I don't want to sit with the property. Um, but but I, I obviously, I also need to maximize my proceeds with the sale of this property. And uh, as I've mentioned to you guys earlier in our conversation, we did, we did quite a lot of renovation on the property after we bought about four years ago. So we, we have invested and we're just looking to, to um, make, make a profit on the property and, uh, and then maximize our proceeds. So again, what, what would happen if we go to market, let's say around the 3 million price bracket? What, what do you guys think about that? Can we try that? Yeah. Yes, so I'll unmute myself quickly. So we got a bit of an echo in the room. So we're dealing with unmutes here. <laughs> That's great. So, Guys, sorry for, the, for, sorry for the echo earlier. Continue, <laughs> no, it's Tim. all good. So, Kurbis, you know, if you're going to go on at 3 million Rand, you know, you're going to have the wrong buyer arriving. You know, 3 million Rand, as I said, your property's got the three beds. It's just, has, it's just lacking that study or the fourth bedroom, you know. It is immaculate. You haven't got the wall up front. That's about 100,000 rands worth of value that you haven't added to the place. The next guy is going to walk in and say, well, I've got to put a wall up. That's 100,000 rand. And that's how they're going to sort of gauge their sort of market value as well. And um, your square meters also sitting around sort of 200 square meters. The one across the road was actually, I think it was 247 square meters. They had, it was a bit of a bigger garage, the extra bedroom and then the enclosed bra room, you know. So there was a few items that definitely helped them to get the three million, you know. This area that we're selling in, you know, the, the, there was actually a record price that, you know, three million rand. So if you're gonna try and go for the, the new record for a three bedroom place, I think we're gonna attract the wrong buyers. You're gonna have the three more guys arriving and sort of going, well, a little bit let down, they've got to put a wall up, um, they're lacking a, an enclosed bra room. You know, the three more guy, he, he really wants to have his, um, his value for money. We are sitting in a market with very low interest rates, so it's very good for you, the seller. Um, the buyers, you know, at the moment, there's quite a lot of stock out there, and they, they can choose. They come across wisely, and, you know, so they, they are very price conscious at the moment, if, if I can say it like that. We really do feel that 2795 is going to be the perfect pitch price for you, and um, we go on that number, we sign the documents, there's quite a lot of paperwork involved, if you've got time today, we can do it immediately. We've come prepared and um, we're looking forward to taking on your property on Team Upton's books and we can book the video guide tomorrow and we can get going. In the next two days, we can be up and running, have a, have a solid buyer within a week and maybe have two or three offers on the table. And that's what you want. You mentioned you're moving to Joburg, so you've got to get going, my man. So we'd love to help. Shall we do that? No, I, I appreciate your your eagerness and, uh, and, and, and trying to encourage me. So we, we, we're going to come to your paperwork in a moment. And uh, guys, I just want to take off the hat of the seller and put on the hat of a Harcourt's colleague for a moment, if you will, if I just want to step out, out of the role play position. And I want to ask Tim if, because Tim is the host of the session, if you would just scroll down on his presentation to a page where he has a graph, that that shows the dangers of overpricing uh the days on the market how that impacts a seller's price and viewings and that is exactly you know how wh what tim and karen obviously base their conversation on and they use they also use this guys i don't know if you want to want to pick it up uh, tim and karen if you just want to take a minute or two to tell us how you use that graph not to go into the detail of how it works but really just how if you the, the value of that in your conversations mm. with your mm. sellers. Yes, so, Kubis, so on this graph, um, it's quite a nice visual sort of statement showing the um, the days on the market. These are kind of weeks, one week, one week, two week, three, as it goes like that. Um, 
this sort of graph here is your buyer interest. The buyers come out at the beginning, you know. We've always, at any given time, there's 20, 30, 40 hot buyers for a specific property. If it's priced right, then, then these guys are, are running to the house. If you price wrong, like the three mil guys coming in, oh, he's not getting that house that he's expecting. So he's walking out the door saying, show me, find me something else. I need a four bedroom. You never listen to me. And all those objections will come your way. <laughs> so if you can see yeah, the first two weeks is when your market comes out and we can show the buyer, the, the seller that, and they can sort of understand that it's definitely true. You know, the longer the time goes, now you're starting to price counsel in week three, week four, you know, the, there's not many buyers. You're starting to feel embarrassed. There's like one buyer per week and there's not much to give feedback for the seller. And um, it's, it's coming to a scenario where you're starting to look for a new market. So, if he hasn't changed his price by week three, then the three more guys still arriving and he's going home. So what we do is if, it, if we did miss the market at the beginning, the seller went to an extra 100,000 and we took it on, we tell him up front, you know, in two weeks time, if we haven't got a deal, there's something wrong and we need to do some price counseling. So we prep him with that, you know, and he agrees. So we almost inscribe it into the mandate forms, price counseling in two weeks time, because we know on that kind of a chat with that guy who's gone for the three more mark, didn't start off week three, the price will come down to like 285 or 2795 and then relaunch, um, put out some nice digital media, you know, team up and we've, um, we're old dogs. We're trying to learn some new tricks. <laughs> so we've employed um, Rudy Massain from Hexam Media. He's very involved with um, Harcourts. He's very open to sharing knowledge and information. And we love He helps us with our videos. So the one you say was shot in half and we're starting to sort of warm up to the camera. And um, so we'll relaunch. We'll do a whole new campaign, new price. We'll make sure that it goes onto the Facebook on a demographic scale to sort of go to um, a new market for the 2795. And then suddenly you will probably just go and do a, a show us on that Thursday or Friday night for like a one hour session. We found those one hour sessions work very, very well. Um, so it's a relaunch on like Monday, new price. The guy's phone, we tell them, opening the house, the doors on, at 5 o'clock on Thursday. Hope to see you there. And we would generate about four or five, if not 10 buyers on that viewing. And then the guys, the, the right market has arrived now. Now you're sitting with the right guys. The energy is good. Everyone's sort of whispering behind each other's heads saying, oh, we have to buy this. You know, we've, we've got to buy this house. You know? And then <laughs> we have scenarios where the, the, the full price is achieved. And it can be like Australia where... The guys can outbid each other to like 2.8, 20, an extra 20 grand just to not lose the house. So, yeah, I hope I've explained okay. that okay, Kubis. Okay. No, thank you very, very much. I appreciate it because we, 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 we do know that uh, it's important that we advise our sellers against the dangers of, of overpricing and being on the market for too long. And I was, uh, I was chuffed to see that you have that graph in your, in your presentation. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted, to, wanted for the rest of the team to see it. Okay, so I'm putting my, my, my seller's hat back on and I want to ask you, okay, so Tim and Karen, um, yeah, you know, I mean, you, you guys are clearly very active in the area and if we go to market, let's, uh, let's say then at 2.795 and we listen to the market, what, what next? What, 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 are, what, what should we do next? Pause. <laughs> um, one other thing that I wanted to mention, Karen and Tim, I'm, I'm really happy with what you presented to me in your marketing proposal on your marketing strategy. Um, you showed on two pages that you do great photography and great video. And obviously I'm very keen to take my property to market because I'm shares to sell. But I am, I'm also keen to give the property to two other agencies in the area that are quite strong in the area. So can you guys, how are you, what is, your, what is your position on offering these services on an open mandate? Would you be able to help me on an open mandate and offer these marketing services, services on an open mandate? Well, obviously we, we would like an exclusive mandate. I mean, um, it's all about accountability as well. I'm, I'm sure that you would expect me to give you 100% commitment with the marketing and the selling of your property so um 
I feel that it's fair that I get 100% commitment from you by you offering me an exclusive mandate. I mean, we have a marketing budget. Uh, we pull out all the stops. We offer the professional HD photography, drone footage, Matterport video tours, uh, social media. Um, we'll work actively and aggressively for you. So also have an extensive database with pre-approved buyers working closely with them. Um, we'll give you constant feedback after every viewing. Um, your weekly reports, you'll get a login to that so that you can track the um, activity on your property at any given time. So, you know, f for us to go in an exclusive mandate, well, that is what we're offering you. So we've got the marketing budget. You can see clearly that in the last 16 weeks, um, on every exclusive mandate, we've successfully sold 16 properties. And that is all about aggressive marketing, getting the marketing budget out there. If you're going to go on an open market, you know, those other agents, you know, just to put your property up on a portal and hope for the best doesn't always work that well. So that's kind of, yeah, I, I would prefer to go an exclusive mandate and get the job done. Okay. Um you know, my, my trouble is, is just that I have been burnt in the past on a, on a sole mandate where I've given a property to an agent and, they, and the, the, the feedback was very poor. Those agents almost just disappeared. And I know that you guys have explained to me in the Harcourt's Promise what you do, and you've just alluded to that again, Karen, in the feedback that you give. Um, what, what would the duration of a mandate be? How long, how long would, us, you know, would, would such a mandate be? Okay, um, just quickly going back again to open mandates. Um, you, you would then be putting competition between agents. You, Kubis, should be putting a competition between the buyers. Um, with an exclusive mandate, um, you've obviously had maybe negatives before where you've signed a three-month mandate and you've got no exposure and no feedback and hardly any viewings and no offers. So, with us, um, I don't need a three-month mandate. I, I will not lock you down to a three-month mandate. I would like a one-month exclusive mandate. If I can't get you sold in a month, if your property is priced correctly and I cannot get you sold in a month, then I'm going to fire myself. <laughs> or you fire me and start all over again. So, yeah, one month, confident, with the right marketing, the right enthusiasm, the right energy, the right tools, I will get you Corbis Low sold. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like what I'm hearing because we need to sell. We need to sell, Team Upton. But, okay, so here's, 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 here's the question. What is your fee? Because um, those two other agencies have come in with very strong offerings. What would Team Upton ask me to, uh, to take my property to market on a sole mandate and roll out all, pull out all the stops and implement all these wonderful marketing uh, strategies that you've presented. Okay, so our commission, oops, I just touched my screen, <laughs> sorry. Um, our commission, we like to go in at 5%. Um, you did mention as well that you've had other agents that are willing to go in for less. Mm. So my question to you is, do you own anything more valuable than your property? Except for my yacht. No. no, no. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> um, I mean, it is your most valuable asset, right? No, sure it is. Yes. Okay. So the agents that are coming in with the lower commissions, I mean, if they if they agents that come in and broadcast the fact that they'll cut the commission, um, they cannot defend their commission, how do you think they're going to defend your price on the sale of your home? So, um but Select a team that you're comfortable with. Um, yeah, you know, someone that reduces their commission will obviously be the same person that, that won't fight for your price when the offers come in. Um, our level of 5% commission we feel is very fair for the effort that we're going to, to put into it. Um, and we also appreciate where the commission is no small amount, and, uh, but neither is your home. So, yeah, 
No, no, sure, you know, but I mean, there's a there's a there's a point five diff sorry one point five difference between what that one other agency that I mentioned to you is willing to to advertise the property at and sell it for the three point five percent plus VAT. Um, they did not present all of this information. I got to be honest with you, uh, in so much detail to to show me what they can do for me. But it's still a lot of money, you know. If we take the the one point five percent difference between uh, because isn't it that all agencies just advertise the mm. property on property 24 and you bring through your buyers and uh, and you sell the property you negotiate on my behalf but 1.5 percent on uh, on almost three million we're talking about uh, almost 50,000 rand difference in commission there so I'm looking to obviously to net the highest amount how I'm still not convinced you know how the five percent is um, is really the best value that I can get. So, Kubis, we understand where you're coming from, and you know it is a big de decision that you've got to make to put your property in the market. We know you're in a hurry to move up to Johannesburg, and um, at the end of the day, you know our fee is a bit higher than the others. Um, I think what you've got to do is you've got to check out all the agents, give them all a fair chance, try and find some that you like, trust, and you're gonna you're gonna believe in their communication skills. We've been doing real estate for the last 21 years and um, you know, we've kind of grown into quite a successful team. We are sort of top 10 in the Harcourts, um, Harcourts group and we're proud of that. Um, we are number one at Harcourts Done at the moment. So we're really proud of that because Dennis Dunn runs a top team and you've got some really great agents there. And yeah, so at the end of the day, I think it's, it's more about finding someone that you really like and trust and you know, for the 1.5 percent extra it's you're probably going to get it from um, our strong negotiating skills to get you that full price of 2.795 at the end of the day we're not going to lose you any time we're going to get you bags packed you've only got two months to get this thing transferred um we've just come out of covid and um, the deeds office have caught up their 30,000 deeds that they were behind and um so you've, you've got to choose the right team if you want to get going you know it's it's, it's critical also, those 3% agents, and I kind of know who you're talking about. We won't mention any names here, but um, if you kind of look at their resume, kind of ask them the question, you know, how many houses have they sold this year, you know? you probably find they've only done like about three sales. And Team Upton, we've done about, I think we're sitting on 25, 30 sales for 2020. It's been a really tough year. We normally double that sort of figure. <laughs> but we were on a couch for two months. <laughs> we kind of had some time off, and now we've got the energy to go again. That's why we did 16 sales in the last 16 weeks. We got qualified buyers for you. It's all about the stress. You know, if you can take the stress of your shoulders, well, that's the way to do it. Um, it's going to be entirely your choice. But you know, at the end of the day, we've shown you our sort of marketing plan. This is our sort of um, toolbox, our framework, where we come from. We're not going to hold back one penny. We're going to spend the 5,000 Rand on the HD photogra photography, the video. We can do drone footage for you. You've got a lovely house on the hill here with amazing views. I think that drone footage is going to look spectacular. It's going to get more eyeballs on the, on the social portals. And um, it does help to boost um, on the public portals like the private property, Property24. If you add extra sort of money to the, to the listing, and when that buyer gets the link, he sees that it's a, it's a highlighted advert. It's a um, boosted post. They know agents aren't going to spend money on something they don't believe in, you know. So we spend our money on our sole mandates. We currently are sitting with about seven mandates. We're running our tails off, but we have a strong team. We've got Jody, our personal assistant, who handles all our back end with regards to dealing with all the funny questions from the attorneys. So, yeah, Tim and Karen, we, yeah, we, we do the legwork. We have got the energy. We take the calls. We don't drop the ball. We um, answer the phone immediately. If it's a link that comes in from Property24, we pick up the phone and phone that client. We don't just reply on the email because we find all agents are doing that. You know? So you've got to stand out in this market. You've got to, sort of, um, you've got, you've got to show your difference. You've got to have, they, they call it the USB, the unique selling point. So when we phone our buyers, a lot of them say, well, gee, that was quick. <laughs> and Karen's quite good like that. So obviously not at 2 o'clock in the morning. We do receive uh, hits at 2 o'clock in the morning. We don't phone them at 2 in the morning. But um, yeah, so <laughs> it's us. We've got the energy. We old dogs, but we, we know what we're doing. And um, yeah, it's all about the expert sort of uh, energy in the marketplace. It's, it takes a lot of energy to get a property sold. 
So, Quibus, yeah, we, we do insist it. Sincerely hope that you're going to go with Team Upton. Um, as I've said before, we're ready to go. The paperwork's lying there. Let's pick up that black pen, that shiny little Harcourt's pen, and um, let's do the paperwork. Let's jump into it. Okay, okay. Guys, I'm convinced. I can't, I'm convinced. <laughs> You, hey. you guys, you guys, you guys seem very switched on, very keen. You came in exceptionally well prepared. You showed me, you sent me that pre-list video. You, you guys are just professionals, and you, you presented that listing presentation or your marketing proposal to me in a lot of detail. And you have really gone. You've made so much effort to to show me what the market has been doing, what properties have sold for, what is currently on the market. So um, I, I really feel very comfortable to go with a sole mandate for a month. And uh, hopefully, hopefully the property sells in a month and we can get top dollar what the market will pay for the property. And uh, yeah, you know, let's, let's, let's do it. I'm happy with the 5% plus VAT. And, and, and hopefully with your strategies, I can maximize the net in my pocket. And Bob's your uncle. So thank you very, very much. We can, then we'll proceed to sign the paperwork. Yeah, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I commend you on your, on your decision today. And really, um, the minute we sign this paperwork, we've got about three hot wires ringing around our heads that we're going to call in the car on the way out. And you know, let's, let's move. You know, if we get sold by tomorrow, don't be surprised, you know. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> we also thank you very much for, for calling us in, first of all, and for trusting us with the marketing and the selling of your really lovely property. We are super excited. We can't wait to get started. So, um, yeah, let's uh, get some paperwork signed. If you're ready to pull the trigger and get us out the starting gate, let's get you sold. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, great, guys. Okay, I think we can we can we can we can finish off the role play there, and um, this pretty much brings us towards the end of the, of the purpose of this of this presentation. Tim, I wonder if you can just stop the screen sharing there on your side, please, so that uh, so that we can come back on the screen, the three of us. Okay, excellent, excellent. Guys, guys, so I think, yeah, you know, there's so much that we can obviously say in terms of our engagement with our clients, and, and, and I'm sure every, every situation is different. And sometimes you walk away from, from an opportunity, and sometimes you go with an open mandate, and you lower your commission, but, I, but, but it's clear, you know, that you guys are just such consummate professionals, and it was, today was definitely not to test you, it was just to, to see um, you know, you guys in action and, and the energy that you bring and, and your language and just hear how, how absolutely passionate you are for your clients. I mean, that's wonderful. I, I haven't heard that in quite some time. It actually makes me very, very Thank excited. You. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Done a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> who wouldn't want to sell with you guys? No, so, so, so really, really well done. Um, and, and to our, all our Harcourts team members listening in, guys, thank you very much for your time. As we know, you know, it's, 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 it's tough going out there. And there is, there is so much that we, that we can learn from Tim and Karen. I'm sure that they are always willing to take a call from you or a little WhatsApp message. If you have a question that you want to ask them or bounce anything off them, they are so blue blooded they would want to help you the best that they can. And uh, Absolutely. so I didn't, I didn't even check this with them, but I just knowing them, having known them for all these years, I know that they will be more than happy to, to, to advise you whether, wherever they can. Um, just from my side, just very quickly before we sign off, I want to remind you that we have on H1 a lot of scripts and dialogue information also. So if you want to browse around on H1, look in the library, look for scripts and dialogue, or just the scripts keyword, and you will find a lot of information. But if you don't come right, you are more than welcome to email me or to send me a WhatsApp text message, and I can send you also a lot of examples of typical objections that you get, not only from your sellers, as we've done today, but also from buyers. Um, and, and just take the time, go through many of those scripts, and, 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 and get your head around 
you, the way that you handle these objections from your sellers and your buyers and put in the effort to, to hone those skills because when you sit in front of your seller or your buyer, you have really one opportunity to impress on them and to make that impression as, as Karen and Tim have done today. So sorry, I don't want to say anything more. I've spoken way too much. But can I just ask Karen and Tim, maybe anything last from your side, any last pulls of wisdom or any parting message or anything that you want to leave the team with? Um, just quickly unmute there. Yes, thanks, Quibus. And well done on encouraging everyone to use the H1 sort of system. There's so much library there, information that um, comes from Australia, all around the world. We should, we should all tap into it and, you know, have a look at it, read it, practice it. You know, I have used to do a bit of um, script dialoguing in my sort of younger sort of days, in my 20s when I was selling hardware, software, and underwear. <laughs> underwear, <laughs> underwear was the most fun, eh? <laughs> but I'll, I'll leave that story for another day. Um, but yes, successful. We were sold out by 11 o'clock in the pub at 12 o'clock. <laughs> in Durban, hot as hell. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> but at the end of the day, in a sales career, I think um, today's topic of objections is brilliant. I think it's something that um, sales people need to sort of endure. And I mean, if, if you're not into getting any no's, well, then you're not in the right business. I mean, at the end of the day, real estate sales, you're going to come against those objections, you know. And when someone says no, what we say is, you know, they're not ready yet, you know. So it's, it's not a complete no. You've got to help them with the, the objections. It's very emotional. You've got to put yourself in their shoes, you know, and try and see where they're coming from. Why did they say no, you know? Always be on their side. And um, yeah, so that's... Hopefully that's a bit of wisdom for you guys today. And yeah, awesome. lots of stories in my twenties. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say something to you? Okay. Don't forget to always have fun and laughter with your buyers and sellers. Make them feel relaxed. Make them feel comfortable. Hashtag fun and laughter. Do it. Yeah. Awesome. Brilliant. Oh, so Brilliant. On that note, I'm going to put my little my heart <laughs> cap on. Woo! And you know, just, just, you know, when you guys wear your caps out floss. there, when you go door knocking and all that, you know, just, just, just treat it like a switch, you know, that's, that's it, you know, you, you're going to come across objections, handle them carefully and be on their side and you'll be fine. Rock and roll. L looking forward to the next no. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, guys. Listen, thank you so very much, Karen and Tim. We are really, really appreciate you guys taking out the time. Uh, we can see why you guys are so extremely successful and we just wish you continued success for the remainder of 2020, bring in those mandates, uh, keep bringing in those sales, push for 18 sales in 18 weeks and keep on pushing hard and uh, keep on being such a wonderful shining example for all of us and such an amazing inspiration. We really, really appreciate you guys and we love you and uh, take care of yourselves. Thanks, Kubas, very much. All right, guys. Thanks, Take guys. care. Thanks for tuning in and all the best. Cheers. Pick up the phone, drop me a WhatsApp, send me a question. <laughs> Absolutely. Do that. Cheers. Cool. Bye, everyone. Well, bye, guys. Okay, friends. So <clears throat> that was today's session, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you, that you found a few pearls of wisdom from that. I'm going to op keep this the session open for a few minutes and you are very welcome to leave any questions that you have or any things that you're wondering about on today's topic and we will come back to you on that. And as I've said, if you want to send me an email, my email address is quibus.low at harcourtsa.co.za and uh, you're welcome to send me a text message with any questions and I'm more than happy to send you information on scripts and dialogues, information that I have. So look after yourself and uh, stay strong and kill it out there in the marketplace. Thanks, guys, for everything that you do. You're awesome. Cheers. <laughs>